There was a time when hats were all the rage. Although they aren't the must-haves they once were, women still love them. For the past 23 years, Suzanne Newman has been making gorgeous custom hats all by hand in her Manhattan studio. Her career started with a chance encounter. I happened to walk into a little hat shop that was on 59th Street and talked to the owner, Josephine, and admired her store. And she tapped me on the shoulder and she said, my dear, my shop's for sale. And it was from then on I decided this is something that I really wanted to do and could do. I had been sewing all my life, and so that's how I started. Today, Suzanne Couture Millinery is located just off Madison Avenue on 61st Street. Most of my clients have special events. I also have a lot of overseas royalty in England and France, all over. She also makes hats for women to wear to the Kentucky Derby and the Ascot races in England. The most important thing about making a hat for someone is to put together the event, what her facial features are, what hat will look good on her and is appropriate for the occasion, as well as matching her ensemble. And it really depends on how a person carries themselves. A small lady can carry a big hat if she has the attitude. One of Suzanne's biggest events of the year is the annual luncheon for New York Central Park Conservancy, the wonderful organization that helps preserve Central Park. When you go to see the event, it's just a sea of hats. This year, Suzanne made a hat for me to wear. I measured Martha's head, and so the hat is made precisely to her head size. She uses wooden molds to make her custom hats. The molds, made from basswood, date back about 50 years. Most come from a company called La Mode Hat Blocks. Based in Minnesota, they're one of the few, if not only, remaining hat block makers in the country. This is the wooden hat mold block brim that we've chosen to make for Martha. And we are going to cover it because it's very old. And here we have Cinema which comes by the yard. Cinema is a sisal straw that is lightly woven and airy but also strong and durable. The straw has been dyed to match Martha's suit and it gets doubled over, folded onto the block and with push pins on the bias, I take it from the front to the back, each side, and we have a cord line running around the edge of the brim. And once that is insecure, you pull it, pull it tight Suzanne uses a steam iron to mold the straw to the block. She then attaches a head plate, one that matches my head size, to the center of the brim block and traces it with chalk. She also marks the front and the back of the hat. Once we've marked the head size, we take the plate off, move the pegs, and here we have Martha's head size. And so I'm then now going to cut in through here. Here we have a, a piece of stitch which, which is basically glue and we take that around the crown to secure it. It gives a little extra strength into the head size. She cuts the brim along the edge formed by the cord. And now we have the brim cut and ready to be wired. Using a zigzag stitch, she attaches a steel wire to the edge of the brim. The brim is finished up with a second piece of cinema cut on the bias, sewn in place and then doubled over and hand sewn. Next, it's time to make the crown, the top part of the hat. Now we're going to block the crown pretty much the same way as we did the brim. The crown and the brim are then pinned together. We've finished pinning it and now the crown is going to be attached to the brim and we're going to give a nice big strong back stitch to secure it. Suzanne uses the same hand-dyed straw to create the trim. We've cut a triangle and we're going to make a little trumpet shape and the edges are rolled down by hand. She dyes feathers to match the straw and then attaches them to a wire using glue and silk thread. Now we're going to create our tulip effect. She then adds the tulip and wraps it all with silk tulle, also dyed to match. She joins several of these flowers together to make a bouquet. And finally, she attaches the bow and flowers, and my hat is finished. And here we have the finished product, Martha's hat, ready to go. 
No matter what I do or where I go, I'm always thinking about hats. I don't think I will ever be able to leave it. It's in my blood, it's what I do, and it's what I love to do.